Okay, so um, enough explaining. We're going to hopefully finish. I think we should easily finish the chapter 11 handout. Oops, no. And we may do a textbook problem. I think that's it. Um, I'm still not, I, I'm still on offense with the do next week. Uh, there's actually a, quite a bit we could do in this chapter. I'm thinking about doing uh, an optimization, but I'll have to I, I'll have to get it figured out because there's uh, there's some quirks to it. But uh, yeah. So anyway, um, so the textbook uh, probably we might do that tonight. Yeah, hold on, I think this will be a short class. We'll see. I guess we would. <laughs> if I stop talking, we keep going on. There may be. All right. So let's uh, so pull out the handout from last time. And I think we were 88, maybe. Yep. Page eight. Calculator. And we're still on relevant costs. And that's kind of what this one is. Let me see if I still have relevant. What do I do with the relevant? Uh... <laughs> I know I had that somewhere. The Happy Meal thing. Well, oh, actually, it's just here. Oh, sorry about this, guys. Okay, so this would be the um, uh, your page. 12. We did this. I think it was we did this first day of class, and we're talking about relevant costs and. I just want to go over because these are actually kind of more directly related to what we're going to do today. And we talk about fixed costs, unless they change, they're not relevant. So uh, they have to change to be relevant. They don't change the general, general rule if, if the fixed costs don't change, if they say fixed, they're not relevant. Some costs, we talked about this before, they're always relevant. No, I said that wrong. Not relevant. I was teaching you guys what not to do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh -oh. Okay. Uh, so it, what we paid for something in the past has no bearing on what we did today. And even if it was paid, say, yesterday, you know, it, it doesn't make any difference. Um, you know, as far as what, um, whether to use it or not. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you a kind of a anecdotal story that uh, I mean, we used to work for Navistar, Navistar makes trucks. And somehow they came up with this idea that they had this huge robotic cube. It was almost like a, like a, I don't know, an ice cube tray looking thing, but it, it had like um, elevators that went up and down and across. And so all these trucks would have these different parts. And so if they needed, you know, uh, trucks all have different engines and that, different size engines and all this kind of stuff, depending on what they're doing with it. So anyway, so if you needed an engine, you know, whatever it is, they would punch in the system and say, okay, we have it in stock and they would, it would, you know, this, and this big, huge building, I think it was like five stories tall. It was literally, um, it was huge. And five stories tall, and it just massive, like a big cube. And it would go um, and go up to that 
you know, the little bin that had the engine, pull the engine out, and it would go to the assembly line. So that was the idea behind this big um, cube thing they had. And the company paid, I, I want to say it was $50 million to put this thing up. I mean, it was, it was big dollars. But they were like, you know, they were saying, okay, this is going to be you know, really streamlined things because, you know, the everything will be nice and sorted out that it will go right to the assembly line and it'll speed up the assembly line. And all this stuff. Well, first of all, the thing was a nightmare. And it was a nightmare to, for maintenance and all that. Um, and not only that, those of you that are management majors will quickly realize that having a, a ton of inventory sitting in a big cube is a really bad idea. Yeah, you know, these are just in time inventory where you line up what engines you're going to get, they're going to arrive at the plant, you know, uh, maybe a day or two ahead of time, but pretty close to when you need it. You're not going to have tons of money tied up in inventory, certainly not millions of dollars of inventory tied up in a big queue waiting for someone to push the button where you want to put it on the assembly line. Uh, and there's all kinds of problems with this thing. But anyway, they ran it for six months and then closed it. <laughs> they didn't use it. You know, it was $50 million. Well, we, we, we paid $50 million. It, it didn't matter to the decision to close it because it wasn't going to work. It wasn't, you know, and the price that they paid for it didn't matter. It wasn't relevant to the city. And, and so even though they, again, they, no one likes to write off $50 million, that's exactly what they did. They just said, okay, this, this isn't working. And the money that they spent making this thing um, was not relevant to the decision. Uh, the problems with it were too great. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so uh, some costs, they are not relevant. Even if they're huge, even if they're uh, $50 million for a giant cube, uh, they're not. Uh, opportunity costs are really just another alternative usually. It says, okay, we could put the money in the bank or we could pay off a loan or something along those lines. So opportunity costs are really just another alternative. And I think I used the example that uh, if you're going to School, you know, here's your normal cost, but you also have an opportunity cost that an alternative of going to school is you could be working a job. And opportunity costs are relevant because they're basically another alternative. If, if we didn't use this money for this project or whatever it is, it would be for something else. Okay, so the big one here is some costs not relevant. Uh, generally speaking, fixed costs aren't gonna be relevant. If they're variable costs, they usually are. Just put that in here somewhere. Well, fixed costs are not relevant. Uh, variable costs is ah. <laughs> variable costs. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, well, it can't be all bad. I mean, maybe your other teachers are constant. So that way, you know, if you can average this out. Okay, so this is, um, let's go to number eight. Okay, on number eight. So they are thinking about replacing a new, a new drill press uh, for their operation. Okay. And so here's the information on the new drill press. Okay, we've got the purchase price. At the annual cost saving, so this is what's just going to uh, save us every year. And it's going to last for five years. And after five years, it's not going to have any value. Yep, 
Here's the old one. Original cost 360, uh, current value 20,000. You know what time value money? We'll get to that in chapter 21, which is one chapter after this one. Okay, well, let's start looking at cost, uh, at things that are relevant. And let's go to the most glaring one. On this old machine, which, well, what if this data is not relevant? There's one of these that is obviously not relevant. For the old drill press, which, which of those items is not relevant? You can either blurt it out or you can uh, put it in um, the chat. What was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> the, question, <laughs> the question is, for this old, here we got this old uh, drill press. We have these three, uh, three data, these are data with the original cost, we have the current value, and we have the remaining life. Of those three, one of them is obviously not relevant, which is it? Uh, would it be the original cost? Yep, the sunk cost. So this is not relevant. It's a sunk cost. Sometimes called the historical cost. And because it's a sunk cost, it took us, yeah, you know, we can't jump in the time machine and go back and change that we paid 360,000 for this thing. So it can't, it can't differ between the alternatives, the alternative of getting the new piece of equipment or not getting the new piece of equipment, right? Those are really the alternatives. So do we buy the new drill press or not buy the new drill press? Those are kind of the, uh, the options. But there's either way, there's nothing we can do that will change that we paid 360 for this old drill press. Whether we get the new one or not, that cost is not going to change. So it will not differ between the alternatives It'll be exactly the same. Okay, so let's uh, let's head up back here to the new piece of equipment and let's go through and see the relevant data. Okay. Um, the new automated drill press, the purchase price. Okay, so we got this new drill press that we're thinking about getting. So is the cost relevant to the decision? What do you think? The purchase price. So we're buying this new piece of equipment. So if we're going to buy it, is that relevant to the decision? Yes. Because it's the current price. Exactly, yeah. And, and if we don't, it's relevant because if we don't buy a new piece of equipment, we obviously don't have to pay for it. Now, is that money coming in or going out? Money going out. Yeah, I'll put it over here. So this would be minus 30,000. 
Where's the money going on? Okay, uh, how about the annual cost savings? Is that relevant? So we're gonna save $50,000 a year for the next five years if we buy this new uh, drill. No. no. Actually it is because if we don't buy this new- Is it? Yeah, because if we don't buy the new drill press, we're not gonna get these savings. You know, whatever, whatever the cost is, they don't tell us what the cost to run this thing. But it costs obviously fifty thousand dollars more than the new one. So I have a question: Is that savings for the machine or for like the job that they're going to be producing? Well, whatever they're whatever they're doing, you know, with the uh, machine, it's it's going to have a savings of fifty thousand a year. Okay, it's, it's the same thing as money coming in, basically. So actually, it's going to be uh, relevant. So the cost savings. And a lot of times that's what you're looking at with a new piece of equipment. Okay, it's fifty thousand dollars per year. All right. So this is per year, and we're going to have it for how many years? Five. Yep. Uh, wait for the machine. Oh. Yeah, okay. Uh, life in years is five. So that equals. So this is cost savings. This is going to reduce our cost by uh, 250,000. So will this be a plus? We buy the new equipment or a minus? If we're saving, was it 250,000? There'll be a plus because it's money coming in. Yep. So it'll be a plus. Okay, so that's a plus. Okay, so it's going to save us. Um, to 50,000. Now there is no salvage value, but notice that the, the salvage value, I'm gonna put it in here, even though it's gonna look kind of silly. If there was a salvage value, it would be relevant. So for instance, if you're gonna have it for five years and then sell it for whatever, $10,000, whatever, whatever it'd be, um, it would be relevant. But in this case, it's zero, so because it's zero. So I'm gonna put in salvage value. And this is going to look completely stupid, but may have been before. Um, and, and here's why that if there was a salvage value, I should mark that differently. And this is for the new machine. That if there was a salvage value, it would be relevant, but in this case, it's zero, so it doesn't make any difference. Now, looking at the old machine, there's actually one more thing that if we buy the new piece of equipment, what can we do with the old one? Sell it? Yep. And the current value of it is 20,000. So we could actually sell the old one uh, I'm put that in yellow. So now it's for the old one. Uh, for twenty thousand, so that would be money coming in. And again, if we're keeping the old, you know, if, if if we didn't buy the new piece of equipment, 
well, we couldn't sell the old one. We still need it for our whatever our production. Okay. So if we add all this up, we get, okay, so it's negative two, 30. Okay, it's not me doing negative. All right. Do the pluses first. If you have a good calculator, you probably don't have this problem. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take, uh, I'll take the pluses first. Oh my, that's gonna be this. Oh, uh, it does do it. Let's get a plus 40,000. So, if a new drill press You can increase by 40,000 over the, the next um, five years. Okay, so this plus 40,000, what does this mean? Well, this means that over the next five years, um, Okay, over the next, so that over the next five years, we, we our income would uh, be better off by 40,000. Now, initially, I mean, it's gonna be negative, right? We have to pay out 230,000, but over the years, punctuate that very well. But over the next five years, it's going to, um, be a plus 40,000. So over five years, it'll, it'll add 40,000 to our net income. And that's one of the things that you know about these long-term you know, investments, a lot of times there is money up front and the idea is that you'll make money back on it. So any questions on that one? And again, the, the big thing here is this, that the, um, oops. Uh, that the original cost of 360,000 is sunk. And there's nothing you can do today to change that. Whether you buy the new equipment or don't, it, you know, the effect you paid 360,000 can't be changed. So that 360,000 is not relevant. Uh, so question, every time, like say we do have a savage value, say like $10,000 or something, we always add it, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and, and if there was a seller's value here, you'd add both of them because you're gonna sell the, the old one today. And this one you would sell at the end of five years, presumably, you know, from some amount or whatever it is. So yeah, you, you would um, you'd add them always. Yep. Put them over here all, put plus minus one. Right.
Yeah, the the, the uh, salvage value of the new machine is going to be plus, and the old machine, if you're salvaging it, you know, currently, uh, that would also be a plus. This plus wouldn't happen for five years. This plus would happen uh, presumably the same year, you know, the same time you bought it. And also, we have to take in consideration the annual cost savings amount. Yep. And, and usually that's going to be by the years, by the number of years. Yeah. And that would usually be a plus. Um, you know, it, it'd be hard to imagine if you're going to buy a new piece of equipment that costs more to run and, and, and then give you some kind of an advantage. Uh, I, I, uh, well, I'll tell you in a minute here. But yeah, so yeah, so that's it. That's uh, let's do another one of those. Now, this one is a little bit trickier in that one, one thing my spacing is off, so that, that's trickier. Um, but also, can you guys hear that clunking? I got a, we got a new puppy, I think I figured that. This thing just, it, it goes berserk for hours every day. I, the craziest thing. <laughs> Never had a dog this energetic before. Okay, um, so I use large scanner digitized bags data uh, considering updating them into a new one. Okay, so here's the old scanner, here's the new scanner. So that's still for five years. Now this, is a little bit interesting. They're gonna have you calculate the operating cost savings. So the operating cost for the old scanner is 55,000. For the new scanner is 15,000. So, how much are they going to save? Is that like 40000 a year? Yep. So, the new scanner... Um, So the old one is 55,000, cost 55,000 a year to run. And the new one costs 15,000. And the annual cost savings would be, uh, it is a kind of wacky space in here, uh, 40,000. I should say annual operating. And so that kind of comes out of that one that it's, uh, you know, the cost difference here, well, it's going to be 40,000 less per year. This is annual, so. And they don't give a salvage value for the new one. Uh, assume that there isn't one, maybe, I would say. Uh, if, they, if they don't give it to you, uh, yeah, just assume it's zero. So see if they should replace the old scanner. or keep the old scanner, those are the alternatives. So uh, using just a new scanner, but so uh, buy a new scanner, I'll purchase it again, okay. So 
So see what the cost would be with the annual, what the total savings would be over, again, it's over five years. I will be quiet, as quiet as I can be, and see if you can figure that one out. talking to myself. Uh, if there was any salvage value um, for the new one, we would put it in there. Okay, so I was going to cut it down here.
Okay, so this is the, let's use the plus, so you want to do it because it'd be uh, increase in the next five years. Uh, and the old scanner cost is not relevant. There's nothing we can do to change that we paid 140,000 for the old scanner. So whether we buy the new one or don't buy the new one, that 140,000 will have already been paid. It can't differ. So it's, uh, it's just the same. Uh, so it's not relevant. And by the way, you know, the, <clears throat> that's one of those uh, things that a lot of times people have trouble with. Is, uh, you know, they'll look at that problem like that and they'll say, well, wait a minute. We, we just paid 100, you know, we paid 140,000 for this thing. And it still has five years left. Why are we replacing it? You know, you know this is, you know, we just, you know, we paid 140,000 for this thing and it's going to last for another five years. There's, there's no reason to replace it. Um, it, 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 well, and it depends on whether there's, there's any kind of savings that you're going to have from replacing it. Uh, and if you don't, if you don't have any savings, then obviously that one won't get, it won't be replaced. But you know, like I say, if there are savings though, it's it. You know, another way to think about it is, you know, you're you're paying out 118,000 um, more than you would if you bought the thing. I'll tell you one of the things that happened that uh, happened to. Uh, a lot of people with light bulbs. I know, that, I know this is probably that could be the most boring thing you hear in your life, but um, old light bulbs were very inefficient. You know, the incandescent ones or whatever they're called, the, the filament ones. Um, you know, they, they would, to be bright, maybe they have 100 watt ones. Well, you can get the same thing with an LED for 11 watts. So, okay, say, so, okay, well, when the, so when the lights need to be replaced, I'll replace them with these more efficient ones, right? You know, when the light burns out, so replacing it with a, another, I mean, I'll, I'll go to this one that's only 11 watts or 10 watts, whatever it is. The problem with waiting is <laughs> you're going to spend way more in electricity for this, you know, for the old bulb. So there's no real reason to keep you from, if you're going to put new bulbs in anyways, to put the new bulbs in and start the savings immediately rather than waiting. So that's one of the things that, you know, the, the economics of it. And it, you know, I pulled out old light bulbs and it just, you know, there's something about me, probably because I'm an accountant, there's something about me that really bothers me. You pull out something perfectly good and throw it in the garbage can because it's, it's costing way more money than uh, the new one. Okay. All right, uh, let's go to <clears throat> okay. Uh, so the Corky Corporation they make different types of hats for upscale clothing stores uh, makes bowler hats bowler hat division has the following annual cost for the year direct materials, direct labor fixed overhead net loss If the bowler hat division is closed, then 35,000 of the fixed cost overhead would have to be allocated to other divisions. Okay, so, you know, we actually don't even have to go, we probably don't even need to use this down here. So 
So let's call this um, option one, keep it open. Option two. Close it. So if we keep it open, let's call it coordinate these. We keep it open, it'll look like this. Uh, if we close it, what will the sales be? Close option two. What will the sales be if we close it? Oh, come on. You guys don't this. If you close it, how many sales are we going to have? Zero. Zero. Uh, if they close it, will you need to buy materials? Nope. So, this, so, uh, so we make a zero. Uh, will you need to have people working, making them nothing? No. And very well, this would be like for electricity or something like that. Now they tell us though that uh, If they close it, the 35,000 of the fixed cost would have to be allocated to other divisions. So in other words, 35,000 of the fixed cost would remain. Okay, so that is not 35,000. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay. So would you want to close this thing? Now, would you want to close whatever this is? Bowler hats. Would you rather lose twenty thousand or thirty-five thousand? <laughs> An obvious question there is: Is there a third choice? But no, that's a, those are the only choices you have. So, would you rather lose twenty thousand? Or thirty-five thousand. Professor, I thought it would be fifteen thousand left over. Uh, well, it says that this is uh, the allocated to other divisions. So thirty-five thousand would actually go to other division. Now, fifteen thousand would of it would apparently be avoided. Oh, okay, I see. And you're right that someone it would be avoided. So now I, I, I'm going to confuse this in a, more in a second here. Uh, so uh, 
uh, so 15,000 of the, um, you know, the fixed costs would be avoided if they were to um, keep it open. And, and by the way, uh, let me show you what that would look like. It, 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 what you bring up is actually a very good point. And by the way, you are absolutely correct in that 15,000 of it is the relevant cost. Allocated costs are not relevant, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a second. What, what I mean by that. So this would be, so if I, I'm gonna take this, um, this fixed overhead and kind of split it up between avoidable fixed cost and allocated fixed cost. that are unavoidable. So what they're telling us here is really of that 50,000 that um, 15,000 is of it is avoidable. And that the unavoidable part is 35,000. Okay, so in other words, these two. I'm going to take the place of this one for now. So I'm, I'm getting rid of this one. I, I just uh, split this up into avoidable and um, allocated fixed cost. Now here is the thing about allocated or unavoidable costs. Generally speaking, they're not relevant. Unless they change, they're not relevant. And a lot of times they won't change. And, and here's, uh, you know, I mean, I'm going to do it in a handout. Here, let, me, let me, let me kind of show what we're talking about. Yeah. And, and, and this is one of those things that, uh, you know, unless you're used to things like allocated costs, it's not going to make any sense. So, Focus doggy. Okay. Thank you, focus doggy. So it's like this. This is what we're talking about when we talk about allocated costs. Let's say that our headquarters. Is that the right one? Move it in a little closer here. So let's say we have a headquarters and the headquarters has a cost of uh, $300 million to run it. Okay. Now headquarters, that's usually where they have the, you know, president and vice president and uh, counting people and all that kind of stuff. They'll all be in the headquarters. But you'll have these different divisions. So let's say division uh, A. That, you know, so whatever they're making. So this is, uh, I don't know. They make shoes, uh, socks, and um, boots, or whatever it is. Now, the headquarters doesn't make any money. You know, you don't make any money off the president. You don't make any money off uh, the accounting department or anything like that. So, you know, they make money selling 
I already said shoes and socks and boots. Okay, so what they'll happen is they will allocate these costs to each of the divisions. So let's say that division A takes 100,000. I probably should not have used such big numbers, but division B, 100,000, and C, 100,000. Now these costs, these allocated costs, these are usually going to be fixed. And these costs are, have, you know, come from the headquarters. They really don't apply to making socks. You can't look at a pair of socks and say, okay, how much does the accounting department goes into the sock? You know, these the socks, this pair of socks. So these are all allocated. So these would be allocated to each one. Now, here's the thing. Suppose that for whatever reason, uh, you close division C. Headquarters still makes, they still cost 300 million every year. What's going to happen to the allocation for Division A and Division B? So Division C is no longer there. Right? It's like this. So instead of 100,000 each, excuse me, 100 million, I should have used 100,000, come to think of it. But instead of uh, 100 million each, how much are each of these divisions going to have to pick up? Fifty million. Oh, an extra fifty million. They're going to, basically, this hundred thousand is going to have to be put into these two, right? So this will be, you know, this hundred thousand isn't going to go away. So you add, add so now you're going to have one hundred fifty thousand added each one of those. Already million. All right. So, you know, basically, this number, because this number won't change, like pens come with little, little uh, rubber things on there to keep them from, I don't know what, but. Okay. So, you know, if this one's gone, now each of these is going to get, you know, half it. So long story short, uh, you know, the, between the alternatives, this allocated cost doesn't matter. So let's go back to what I was uh, doing before. Uh, So here is what, I may imagine this way, but by the way, the way I showed you is, is there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with doing it this way. I think I told you guys, if you, if there's something that's not relevant, if you add it to both, if you do it to both sides, you're fine. And, and this one is just because it's so much quicker just to do the option one and then option two was uh, quicker. But truthfully, if we were to only to look at costs that are totally relevant, this would be, the allocated costs would not be relevant. And this would have a net income of, uh, oops, 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 oops. Time for calculator. Okay, 110,000. Minus forty thousand, minus thirty thousand. Um, 
unhappy coincidence there. So truthfully, the net income for this, if you use relevant costs only, is be plus 15,000. So even though it's maybe isn't as profitable as we want it to be, it's still actually adding 15,000 to cover some of these allocated costs. Yeah. And, you know, so again, the, it, there's nothing wrong with, um, what do you think we show? Because this 35,000, you're absolutely right that the 15,000 is actually the relevant amount. But we're having the negative 35,000 at each side. So this is the one that's going to be allocated. Uh, it's, it's allocated here also. Uh, but it, it really, you know, if you compare these two, you can see that this option one is actually adding 15,000 towards this 35,000 that's getting allocated to them. May not be covering all of it, but they're covering some of it. And again, the allocated cost, you know, going back to, to this thing, you know, why aren't they relevant? Because between alternatives, they don't change. The headquarters didn't change. We still have an accounting department. We still have a president. We still have a chief financial officer and all that kind of stuff. It goes into this headquarter cost. So when we So when we do, you know, delete a division, this cost doesn't change. It just gets allocated somewhere else. So allocated costs in general are not going to be relevant because they're not going to change. You know, this cost isn't going to change. So even though they allocate it to the different divisions. And by the way, this is one, re <laughs> one reason why, uh, you know, if your company ever gets bought out, uh, this is going to be a real drag because whoever buys you out, a lot of times they'll start allocating costs to you. Um, you know, it's part of the no fun part of uh, working for a company that gets bought out. Okay. Oh, 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 here, down here, I, I get the uh, same thing. Yeah, so this is, uh, you, you notice that on this one, I, I split it up between. And again, there's a couple ways to figure out this one. <clears throat> um, probably the easiest way, though, is to come down here. And they said that uh, if the home model is eliminated, then the 25,000 of the allocated fixed costs would have to be allocated to other divisions. Okay. So this 25,000, it would have to go to other divisions. So it would kind of look like this. And you can probably guess the moral of the story on this one too. <clears throat> so your total sales would be 140 plus 210 is 30, uh, 315,000, not 250, 350. Minus 90 minus 130 is minus 220. Oops. I think. Yeah. Minus 20 minus, so let's be minus 30.
and the allocated cost would still be the same. So you have um, V50 minus. So our income would go down to 25,000. I can redo these. I'm getting, there's too many, uh, there's too many 25,000s here. It's an unhappy coincidence. Oops. Even more unhappy that I can't type it out right. So this one would say, okay, well, would you rather have, you know, 25,000 or 40,000? You say, I'd rather have 25,000. Really? No, not really. I mean, be facetious. But uh, another way to figure this one out would be to um, simply eliminate the allocated costs. You could say, okay, these costs are not relevant because it doesn't matter what we do. You know, the, the headquarters isn't gonna change. So these allocated costs are not really relevant to, to our income. So this one would be uh, 40,000. The second one here would be 50. 60,000. And this one be 15,000 plus, plus 15,000. And I would see none of them should be eliminated. They're making a total of 115,000. Is that right? <laughs> I better check that. 530. Minus. This one's dark. Okay, so 530 minus uh, 355. Minus 60,000. So, you know, these, uh, these fixed costs are, now, again, they may not be making as much money as we want them to make. However, every single one of these is adding something to cover those allocated costs. And so this home model, even though it looks like it's unprofitable, is actually making money. Uh, again, maybe not as much as we want it to make, but um, every single division here is actually profitable if you look at just the relevant costs. You know, these costs are not relevant. It really depends on the, you know, on how they give you the information. But there are a couple ways to think about it. You know, another way is just think about that if, you know, if, if this uh, if this one is closed, that twenty five thousand still hangs around. Uh, any questions on that? So if it's discontinued, we pretty much still keep the same fixed cost no matter what. For the allocated. The allocated costs generally aren't going to change. 
Now, the, now it is it is possible they have avoidable fixed costs. For instance, they may have a supervisor salary. If they close that division, they don't need the supervisor there anymore. Move them somewhere else, or uh, you know, uh, let them go, or whatever. But or him or go. So, it is possible there is avoidable fixed costs, and those are relevant. So, if you can avoid the fixed costs, they're relevant. It's these fixed allocated costs. These are generally unavoidable. And because they're unavoidable, uh, they're not relevant. And you see that down here, you know, that you can't tell that they're, they're not going to be relevant because if they close a division, it's 25,000. If they don't close a division, it's 25,000. It's, it's like the Coke, uh, the fries and the Happy Meal, either way. Yeah, and so that's uh, you know, and and uh, I, th I think I, I think I mentioned to you guys that it, 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 there is there's possible that there's other things that uh, are relevant. It really is a uh, a case by case thing. Um, I think I mentioned to you guys before that we had a uh, when I was at. Uh, Navistar, we had a thing called a, a net pool where uh, you had workers that they, 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 through their agreement with the, they had a union and through the agreement with the union, they would have to keep a certain amount of employees uh, working at the plant. And so sometimes the employee cost, uh, I, I remember specifically one of the appropriations that they had, the employee costs were not relevant because, you know, those same workers had to, they, they were still hired. So on the variable cost side, the workers, you know, the direct labor wouldn't change. It became not relevant. And I, I, I remember looking at this thing thinking, well, this can't be right. You know, this has got to be like a huge cost. You know, and, and, and when I looked into it, it was right because it, it, um, uh, it didn't matter. It, it, you know, you had, you had 10 fewer jobs because you still have the same number of employees. And that was by, you know, negotiated union contract. So you, you know, there was a kind of strange one there and that you'd have actually the variable cost. So you normally think it was variable cost of direct labor that wasn't relevant because it didn't change. So that was kind of an unusual one. But to my, to my defense, uh, the, the uh, the, the appropriations that I did the audit was, I think, I'm, I'm positive, it was the only time in my life that I kind of threw up my hands because literally like half of them were done way wrong. <laughs> so, you know, here, here you are, I think, okay, here's, you know, and these are all done by the higher up people in this, you know, this plant. You know, you know how do you write that up that, well, you know, people in this plant they have no idea what they're doing. Sometimes it didn't matter, but the, the, there were there were quite a few errors, and it was it was really a, a touchy situation. Especially since I was at the company about a year, a year and a half, um, and through no fault of my own, actually, I, there, a couple of people got fired because of a I found some fraud earlier on, so I already had this reputation as whatever. But anyway, um, uh, it, you know, we, we we wrote it up as basically check your numbers because some of these weren't right. And we, we can't give a little bit more guidance on it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, the stuff is hard. I mean, you know, some of the stuff's hard and some of it's, it's, it's hard to think about, you know, about going through. And again, you know, sometimes it just it's depends on the situation because like I say, the, the you know, one of the ones that I pulled out was that, you know, they had missed this labor savings, but there wasn't a labor savings. There was a, you know, they, they had the same number of employees they had before and after they, you know, this project, um, you know, so it didn't really matter. Uh, it was not relevant, which is kind of unusual, but uh, makes sense if you're in that situation. Question on this? All right. Um, I'm gonna call it a night. Uh, Cause I, the next thing I want to do is go into 
uh, optimizations and there's a website that we go through uh, to, to do that and uh, it's just easier to just go through it all at once so I don't want to go like halfway through it and then it, it, it takes about I don't know maybe 45 minutes an hour to set them up and then to run the, the optimizations takes about the same amount of time so I think we'll wait until next week and then and we'll do that I think, uh, what is it? So this week is what, week 11? Or the 12? I think it's 11, right? It's 11. Okay. Yeah, and, it's 11. And so next week is week 12, and then the week after that, I think is spring break. Correct. Not, uh, okay, okay. So anyways, uh, the, the optimization will be a good, you know, clean kind of cut thing by, uh, for next class. So anyway, uh, if you still need to turn things in, you can turn things in without penalty. I would encourage you to do it. And since we don't have anything too pressing this week, uh, this would be an ideal week to catch up about halfway through the semester, a little bit more. Um, so if you are missing things, uh, take advantage of this lull to uh, turn things in. You can turn things in without penalty, so there's no reason not to turn it in. And uh, uh, I believe the grade to dates are up to date. So if you want to take a look and see where you're at, that, I think those are, the, are, are all up to date. Uh, if you have any questions on them, uh, feel free to an, uh, ask me. And if you need to turn something, and you can also okay. resubmit. Any question? Oh, so, sorry, I cut you off. Um, no, no, I couldn't find the. Um, uh, it was it was a question that we did. Uh, it was it was one of those days where I was missing, but it was. Problem three dash thirty. I can email you about it, but I didn't find the uh, recording of it online. Okay, I'll take a look. So three thirty. Yeah, it was like um. Yeah, it was like yeah three dash thirty. Okay, uh, Alex. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alexander, it's me. All right, I, I'll, I'll see where uh, three dash thirty. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm gonna have to look at. Um, I, 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 yeah, I'll, I'll look at my computer and see. Okay, I, I, I can take care of it this weekend, but yeah, just. Like, oh, okay, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you and let you know which one it is. Uh, it, it, it's kind of you know, I've, I've never had to do you know, the, it's, it's funny the sheer amount of videos, you know, because I do the videos and then I have to edit them. And then load them, and they all. So anyway, I have like hundreds of videos now. But anyway, and I and I have to keep I keep transferring them onto my long term big disk. So anyway, I'll I'll look and see if I I, I probably already transferred that one, but I'll take a look at it. Yeah, I appreciate it. it's the only one I'm missing. Thanks. Okay, okay, and um, and, and and when I do find it, I'll go ahead and label it on the um, you know the on the recording so that people know which one it is. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, any other questions? Okay, so so again, yeah, feel free to turn stuff in. If you're missing stuff, uh, just get it in. Um, it, it, there's no penalty for it. So uh, regardless of the reason, um, uh, turn it in. And again, it, 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 once you turn it in, uh, it'll obviously, uh, if you're missing it, it'll, it'll help your grade. Any questions? Okay. Well, I will see you guys next week. We will start uh, optimizations, which is kind of wacky, but it's it's actually kind of fun. I know you guys think I'm lying, and, but it, uh, it actually is a um, it, it it's it's not that bad. I'll put it that way. Okay, I'll talk All to right. you guys later. Have a good night. You too. Oh, uh, I'm Wait. sorry, you guys. I also put this as a, a drop for this uh, handout. It'll be due a, next. Tuesday. So, okay. Gotcha.